Homelessness was pretty bad in New York, and it really bothered me that here we were the richest city in the world, and uh, we had all these homeless people. And I mean, I exaggerate a little, but I, to myself, I said, you know, this is New York City, and we're becoming Calcutta. People are not particularly interested in um, in dealing with people who may not be able to function. People who are drunk, people who are suffering from the symptoms of their serious and persistent mental illness, people who are dirty and disheveled and seem to go against all of the um, of, of the human qualities that we appreciate. different situation than now. First of all, homeless almost always meant someone on the Bowery uh, who was a chronic alcoholic. Uh, there was relatively little focus on the notion of homelessness as much as there was on the question of drinking and drinking to excess. And what we were operating was a detoxification and an outpatient clinic and a small halfway house program uh, for people who are chronic Bowery alcoholics. We really wanted to start with just a little foot in the door because the traditional way of uh, handling people had been if they're mentally ill, they get locked up in the state institutions and they're never seen again. They were people who had worked on the railroads, worked summer construction, uh, they were single. Uh, these men typically would be tossed in jail for around three to five days. They would get cleaned up, a new set of clothes, uh, um, a bath, a shower, a shave, and turned out again. Project Renewal, actually Manhattan Bowery Corporation was founded by a, uh, a very sort of um, interesting collaboration between the New York City court system, the New York City Police Department, and the Vera Institute of Justice. At that time, um, public inebriates were arrested, and the police spent a huge amount of police hours arresting people bringing them to 100th Center Street, keeping them in jail overnight where the judge released them in the morning simply because they were uh, alcoholic. Um, it was a huge amount of police hours and the Vera Institute of Justice thought that maybe um, people would respond better if they were offered treatment instead of jail. I, as a police officer, am assigned to the Manhattan Bowery Project Detoxification Unit. We ride with a recovered alcoholic, and we patrol the Bowery three times a day. When I see a man who was out in the street maybe 20 times, I've seen him, I always say maybe there's a chance. There still is a chance, because I know men who I actually picked up 15, 20 times who are sober today. Yeah, I've been involved with uh, Project Renewal, or Manhattan Bowery Project, since Christmas of 1969. Uh, I was a member of the police department at the time, and I was assigned here to work with a program that offered an alternative to arrest. In the years preceding that, that are the, the uh, development of Project Renewal, um, the police department was arresting alcoholics on the street. Part of my job in the police department was to do, make those arrests. So that led us to an experiment uh, where the, the Department of Social Services gave us a floor in the, in the men's shelter uh, the police department gave us a car and a policeman. Uh, we got um, uh, two volunteers to go out on the street and approach men to see if they, if they were offered a place to sleep, a bath, a shave, some food, and a medical checkup, how many would come. So we had, I think, 15 beds. They asked 15 people. Um, no, they asked 18 people, and 15, in fact, accepted, all, of, all within Oh, probably five hours. So that solved our question of could this be a voluntary program?
but what did develop was new programming. First, the outpatient clinic that saw 100 to 150 clients at any given time. These were the people on the Bowery who would not go off to the rehab, but said, well, we'll try and stay sober with you. So we opened the outpatient clinic. And then several attempts at work programs during the time between 67 and 70, and then finally the, the development of Project Renewal, the uh, kind of halfway house work rehab program that we opened in Brooklyn. And from there, the agency expanded beyond that into caring for the homeless, mentally ill. We were operating at that time the only non-hospital-based detoxification unit in the city, and that was a medically supervised unit. It was some years later when the issue of shopping bag ladies or homeless mentally ill people became more prominent and we took the, again, the first agency in the city to take a stab at dealing with the problem. My mission has always been a public mission, a mission to serve the poorest clients, uh, those that I feel uh, get shortchanged, uh, would get shortchanged if they had to rely on sort of the conventional means. There's magic in these walls, you know. This, this program right here, it saved my life. It helped save my life. It's, it serves chronic relapsing drug addicts and alcoholics. It serves a very difficult population, uh, which is one of the things that I like about it. Less than a year ago, well, over a year ago, I was a drug addict and alcoholic, and I got a number of love and gratitude for this program in this house right here. So if it wasn't for this house, I don't know where I'd be. But these are people you step over on the sidewalk. These are the most hopeless people. The, uh, my, the, the population has evolved to a much older population, so these guys have a long history of self-destruction. I got my family back in my life. I got my kids back in my life. I never thought it would be like this, you know, because I put them through so much hell when I was out here getting high that um, I never thought that they would accept me back again. But now I got nothing but love for, for my family. They got nothing but love for me. The clinic was started back in 1968. It was one of the first programs that Project Renewal operated. Uh, it's always run out of this particular facility, and it's always had the mission of serving homeless people with addictions. We have always understood that, uh, that addiction is often accompanied by psychiatric problem as well. And so we have made a commitment in the outpatient clinic to make sure that we're treating both addiction and the psychiatric disorders concurrently. I, I don't think I quite understood homelessness um, and urban homelessness, you know, until I until I came to Project Renewal, and I didn't um, quite know about all of the programs and all of the, you know, how much DHS, you know, funds different programs and encourages um, homeless people to, you know, get off the streets and and find permanent housing, and just how fortunate a lot of homeless New Yorkers are to have these services available to them. All my life, for 20 some odd years of living in the street, I've been called old head, yo craghead, yo this, all kind of names by kids and everybody. But when I came here for the first time in 20 some odd years was I ever called Mr. Mr. Piper. Working here has helped me to understand that some of the barriers that we create between ourselves and the clients that we work with are very artificial and that we need to be constantly challenging those barriers both publicly and within ourselves in order to really try to help our clients. Ooh, Project Renewal. God bless Project Renewal. In the final quarter of the 20th century, in one of the world's most prosperous cities, 
Human beings are living lives of unspeakable misery, hopeless, friendless, forgotten. For more than 20 years, Manhattan Bowery Corporation has been reaching out to New York's homeless. And thinking about the whole 40th anniversary and thinking about how long I've been here, I kind of think, I think back on the days when I was doing street outreach and how exciting it was because it was groundbreaking. You know, we were being creative. At the time, we would um, tool around town in a little VW van, you know, two social workers and a driver, um, quite the picture. The drop-in centers didn't have case management services. There were no psychiatric services for this population. That actually that was one of the reasons that we developed the mobile psychiatric outreach team, which was meant specifically to serve the drop-in centers and the clients that were coming directly from the street. The first Housing First model was probably us working on the streets with, um, with women primarily who were a result of the tail end of deinstitutionalization, you know, the, the, the true shopping bag ladies as they were called. This is the news leader. ABC 7 Five Witness News. The New York City's homeless with nowhere to go and no health insurance often don't even try to get the medical care they need. But one organization is driven to making sure that the health of the homeless is not ignored. Lauren Glassberg explains. In the midst of all the city's congestion, one vehicle signifies compassion. The Medvan is a mobile medical outreach clinic run by Project Renewal. When Dr. Brenda Merritt started treating the homeless 17 years ago, she did it on foot. Now she does it in this $200,000 mobile home. Small successes are um, what you hang your hat on and you hope for. And you, you know, sometimes it's two steps forward, one step back. But as long as you're making progress, um, it's very satisfying. Lauren Glassberg, ABC 7, Eyewitness News. The van itself preceded my time here. It's been around the various uh, shades, forms for about 20 years or so. And it started uh, actually with a small minivan, then it graduated to a larger 28-foot van, and then this present incarnation as we're on right now. We like to consider ourselves more than just a safety net. We like, we like to be a barrier against people falling into the cracks. Well, I um, came to Project Renewal just six months ago to be medical director over all our medical programs. So that includes the van programs. We have three van programs, a scan van, street smart van for youth, and the med van, which we're sitting in. And we also have three medical clinics in shelters, in our three shelters, one women shelter and two men shelters. So I work at all sites um, and uh, to support the program however I can. I think because of the relationship that we have with the places we go where we bring the van, as well as the kind of providers we have who are very sensitive to the, the needs of this population, we have people who are really uh, coming to us over time, consider us their primary source of medical care. Working in Manhattan, commuting in through Grand Central, and um, it was during a time when Grand Central was a gathering place for the homeless. And every morning I'd walk past these people, and I didn't know whether to give them money, not give them money, and I just felt um, that it wasn't right to just keep walking past. are gone. Uh, it's a younger crowd that's coming in. More and more drugs uh, than alcohol. Uh, crack cocaine had primarily took over a few years ago. Now heroin's coming back in really strong. Um, so it's, it's gone through many, many changes. And just the, the what do you call it, gentrification uh, of the neighborhood uh, itself. I mean, what was a gas station is now a multi-million dollar hotel, what was uh, a flop house is now a bed and breakfast. I mean, you know, it's, 
a lot of changes. <laughs> so slowly the population began to become more mentally ill, younger, uh, fewer proportionately uh, white, and that was really, I think, a representative of the mental health population that was being thrown out of the uh, state hospitals. As a consequence, you had several types of homelessness, one the addicted population, two the mentally ill population, and finally people who were squeezed out of housing because they couldn't afford the rents. Project Renewal's residential treatment programs and Housing Plus Service residences provide the stability, treatment, and support their clients so desperately need. Supportive housing, when it first started, certainly this program was the first supportive housing project uh, as part of the city and state New York, New York agreement. At the time, it was simply geared towards people coming out of institutions, geared towards helping them stay off the streets and out of the hospitals. But over the years, what we found is that people could move on with their lives, that they could recover, they could go back to work, they could reconnect with their family. When this program first opened, uh, the idea of supportive housing, nobody really knew what it was. The community at the time, the Hell's Kitchen community, was very opposed to the idea of having a residence with mentally ill people living in it. But we've also formed some powerful alliances with people in the neighborhood. The Clinton Residence Program in the, in the Hell's Kitchen Clinton community has a wonderful relationship with the local community garden, with the Block Association. Uh, a community advisory board was formed to help bring in members of the public, uh, people from other agencies, to feel that they were contributing and a